that you were in a courtroom. Picture the, the courtroom scene that first comes to your mind, whether it's from a movie or a TV show or something else. And you're on the witness stand. And you're on the witness stand, and the Lord is cross-examining you. He is checking out how you have lived your life. He's asking you questions, and they're hard questions. I can't imagine being in that situation. I don't know that I would want the Lord to cross-examine me, because I know who I am. And yet, that's what David asks the Lord to do in Psalm 26. And it created a, an impressive picture for me that I want to read to you. It says, Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. For I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gathering of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. I wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O oh Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of your wonders. The Lord stands before you and he, David, invites him to test David's motives and his heart. And we know David was a man after God's own heart, that's what it says. And even in that, I don't know that I would want God to test my motives or test my heart. I'd like to think that they're pure, but held up to God's refining fire and light I can only pray that they would hold up. How about you? How would your heart and your motives stand up before God? Those are tough questions that I don't think are easily answered. But it is, the, it is our Lord who looks at that stuff that matters to, the, to Him. The heart above all reveals who we are. David reinforces that even at the end of First Chronicles when he's transferring his kingship from himself to Solomon. And he says that I have chosen him, the Lord has, as my son, and I will be his father. And he will continue to obey my commands and regulations as he does now. If he does that, his kingdom will last forever. And so David then turns and he charges his son. And he says, Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build the temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. If the Lord knows our hearts, and he knows our thoughts, he knows our plans, he knows the things that move us, and I invite you to lay yourself open before the Lord and to allow him to cross-examine you today. To know that he is gracious of heart and merciful in forgiveness. His grace knows no bounds. For when we look at David, if David said, I have a clean heart, Lord, Chuck, come and check it out. We know David did lots of stuff that did not please the Lord. And yet he was still willing and able to say, I have a clean heart before you, Lord. Come and check it out. That is how it is for us as well. 
For as we have a clean heart, we are able to truly enter into a relationship with Christ, to worship Him in intimacy, to celebrate all that He has done for us. And so that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. And I invite you to just spend a couple moments as you walk through your day, maybe just in quiet, find a little corner or walk out in the yard, just something to get away and just say, Lord, I'm yours. Clean me of all unrighteousness. Make my heart pure before you. Because as you see in both of these the end result is worship and then work. It is to worship our God. And then for Solomon, it was to build a temple. For us, it is something even greater than a temple. We are called to build the kingdom of God. That place where God's will reigns supreme. To expand that. And we can only do that as we come with clean hearts. And so I invite you to come before the Lord today, to spend some time in quiet, and then be about His work as He lays it before you, because His Spirit will direct. And so God bless today. May you have a clean heart even as you stand before our Lord who cross-examines your thoughts and your motives. May they be found pure before the Lord today. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that it is only because of you that we can even have an opportunity to stand before the mighty God of all creation. It is only because of your sacrifice that we can have clean hearts and can be seen as righteous before our Lord. Lord, help us not to take that lightly, not, not to blow that off, to run by that, but to understand the work that you did and the work that you call us to do before you and our Lord, which is to come with a humble heart, open hands, and a contrite spirit. Lord, it is only because of your spirit that we can do your work that you've called us to do. Help us to do that this day. I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight we have our town hall meeting at the 6.30 on Zoom. And we'll be uh, talking about... Uh, kind of trying to catch us all up and get us all back onto the same page uh, with a just kind of a broad look at all the things that are before us and the things that we're working on, the things that we will have to work on. And so I invite you back for that. Myself and, and Pastor Debbie will, uh, will share some of what's happened and where we're going, and then we'll have an opportunity to talk about it. So I invite you to come, and uh, it will be a good experience. So hope to see a lot of you there tonight also tomorrow night join us for the uh, for the zoom for the uh, Bible study on zoom as well so I hope you have a great day and stay strong I know that maybe is a something that's a little overworked but just hang in there and as God's people we will glorify God through our lives together before this world God bless bye-bye